When the word strip club flashes across the screen, you might conjure images of a seedy, smoky den with every dude you never wanted to hang out with gawking in the audience. And, well, yeah, there are definitely strip clubs like that. But to pigeonhole the long, nuanced history of exotic dancing into one pulsating stereotype is like stuffing 12 Chippendale dancers into a phone booth. And it ignores all the legendary performers who helped turn exotic dancing into a legitimate, if not very NSFW, industry. This is how the World's Fair, a multi-million dollar beefcake empire, and a German spy helped turn strip clubs into a celebrated and relatively normalized aspect of American culture. While there's mention of people stripping in both ancient Sumerian myths and some sections of the Bible, the profession is seemingly solidified in 6th century Greece, where lawmakers established different classes of prostitutes, including erotic dancers and acrobats. Plus, in ancient Rome, female dancers would disrobe and dance to celebrate Flora, the goddess of spring during April festivals until the Catholic Church took over and promptly shut the entire party down while making everyone else feel guilty about their decisions. Sounds familiar. Anyway, around the 14th century, throughout the Middle East, belly dancing is common during celebrations and as performance art. They do keep their clothes on, but spectators toss coins and other valuables towards the dancers. In 1654, extremely horny English poet John Donne describes a striptease in explicit detail in his poem, To His Mistress Going to Bed. Thousands of people buy it. Uh, because they're supporting the arts. By the 18th century, most English brothels feature posture girls, which are basically strippers. But as a Victorian era unfolds, so does a reductive outlook on sex. And things don't really start advancing until the late 1800s. At the Chicago World's Fair, a belly dancer known as Little Egypt in the Cairo exhibition becomes an overnight American sensation with her hoochie coochie gyrating dance and uncorseted midriff. Around the same time, in France, theaters like the Moulin Rouge feature elaborate burlesque shows that blend performance art, live music, and scantily clad performers. And some European dancers become legitimate celebrities, like the legendary Matahari, who shocked Western audiences with her nearly nude dances. And then, more so by becoming a German spy during World War I, which she was promptly executed for. Yikes! Anyway, at the turn of the 20th century, burlesque and belly dancing inspire theaters like New York's Minsky's and traveling carnivals where performers like Gypsy Rose Lee and Sally Rand use ostrich feathers, bubbles, and traditional burlesque elements to titillate Depression-era Americans. At this point, some performers begin incorporating the poles from their traveling tents into their shows, thus creating an early form of pole dancing. Fast forward to the 1960s. Stripping levels up with the advent of go-go dancing. The iconic performer Carol Dota breaks barriers by performing topless at San Francisco's Condor Club. In the late 1970s, as you've probably noticed, the performers thus far in our history have been almost exclusively female. But that's about to change in a big way. LA club owner Steve Banerjee, on the advice of a friend who just visited a gay dance review in Montreal, creates an all-male striptease act at his bar, Chippendales, designed to cater to women. On the first night, more than 600 women show up to catch the hunk-tastic performers. And by the 1980s, Chippendales becomes the biggest strip club chain in the world. But its extremely dark history eventually led to its burnout, which was recently profiled in a very good podcast for all those interested. From the mid 80s through the 90s, stripping seeps well into the mainstream the only way it can, through a handful of legendary pop culture moments. Flashdance features Jennifer Beals as a welder by day, stripper by night. Hair metal bands like Motley Crue and Poison make music videos that are essentially strip clubs with screeching guitars. Showgirl starring Saved by the Bell's Elizabeth Berkley is a massive cultural touchstone for being such a giant flop. Striptease features Demi Moore, one of the biggest stars in the world, playing a stripper. And Chris Farley spoofs Chippendales on SNL in one of the show's most celebrated sketches of all time. Then, in the early 2000s, drawing from ancient Chinese and Indian pole work practices, 
plus her experience as an exotic dancer. A Canadian woman named Fania Mundy pioneers the next big workout craze, pole fitness. Essentially, tricks and techniques originally created by strippers are co-opted by suburban moms. Fun! In 2005, T-Pain drops his hit song, I'm in love with a stripper. And 12-year-old me really has no business belting it so loud. In 2012, much to everyone's delight, Channing Tatum produces and stars in Magic Mike, a film based on his time as a male stripper. It eventually inspires a live residency in Vegas and Australia. Crikey! 2019, the crime slash stripper drama Hustlers starring J-Lo and stripper turned musician turned absolute legend Cardi B is released to rave reviews. In 2020, during the pandemic, one creative Portland strip club invents a drive through socially distant stripping experience, which definitely does not look apocalyptic at all. And in 2021, AKA now, Legendary strip clubs like Magic City and Atlanta are just as known for their food as their dancers. The movie Zola continues the tradition of great stripper films. And progressive queer clubs like Harpies in London strive to create much needed safe spaces for trans and BIPOC performers. So we have no other choice but to salute you strip clubs. You make bachelorette parties more fun, workout routines more erotic, and generally provide a safe, clean space for people to look at other people getting naked while enjoying lemon pepper wings. If only that old horn dog John Dunn was here to see us now, he'd probably be even hornier. Hey y'all, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and comment on what you want us to cover next. We might not actually do it, but we'll definitely read the comment. Thanks.